Welcome to the EHF Euro 2018 live show presented by Lidl. I'm your host Rafaela Jan coming to you from our studio in Split, Croatia. The wait is finally over and the competition will start tonight. This match day one sees teams from group A and B play. So we have Croatia, but first Sweden, Iceland with the throw off at 6.15. That is played in split. Later on Croatia, Serbia at 8.30 and then also Group B playing in Porridge. We have Belarus against Austria at 6.15 followed by Norway against France at 8.30. All these matches you can watch them live on ehftv.com so no reason to miss any of the live action. Now let's take a closer look at one of these. Norway against France. That is a rematch of the 2017 World Championship. But maybe even more importantly, these two also played at the last edition of the Euro and that is when Norway upset France to reach the semi-finals and thereby kicked out France out of the competition. So let's take a look at these pictures now. This is also a very interesting encounter because we have two playmakers that play on the same club team, PSG. So we have Zander Zagusen from Norway versus Nikola Karabatic. So usually they share playing time on the PSG court, but now they will be going face to face. And then let's also take a quick look at the goalkeepers from Norway and France. With the young Torbjörn Bergerud, there's a very talented player in the Norway lines and then you have on the other hand Vincent Girard on the French side and he has showed to be a very very worthy replacement of the retired Thierry Omeyer. So good one here, lots of interesting facts. Now the other one that is Croatia versus Serbia and all eyes will be on talisman the Croatian Domagoj Duvniak. So let's take a look at their last encounter that is from Serbia in 2012. Two very strong sides facing off here and it's also going to be a very interesting clash because of the close proximity of these two countries. So a lot of Serbian fans are to be expected in the city of Split and then for the Croatians everybody will be looking at the form of Domagoj Duvniak and who knows might he be even playing for the whole 60 minutes. We will see about that one. And now it is time for you guys to start getting active. We want to know who do you think will win between Croatia and Serbia? This is our Facebook emoji competition. So all you have to do is respond with the corresponding emoji, Croatia or Serbia, and we will be revealing the fans choice later on at the end of the show. Now, yesterday, you already heard about one person from the team, that is Brian, who is also referred to as the Snapchat King. But it probably doesn't surprise you that we have a lot more players, teammates on the EHF team. And um, I would like to introduce you to some of them. We have, for instance, on Instagram, we have Marcio. He is in Varashtin, remember, that's just the city north of Zagreb. Also, we have the duo of Berenice 
and Spila, they will be providing videos for the show. And these two girls, they come to you from Split. Now, Brian, as I already said, he's in Zagreb and he is our Snap King. Don't forget, you have to follow us. It is at EHF Euro and also EHF underscore live. Also, we're on Facebook and Twitter. We are on YouTube. Instagram, Snapchat, everything. So follow us on all channels. Now, what better way for the mobile reporters to introduce themselves than to hear from themselves? So here we go. As you know, it's a really tough competition, so the best way to, to start is just focus in the first game and going step by step because uh, here all the opponents they are really tough. We have a tough group, so Saturday we have just two things uh, to play against Czech Republic because they are a tough team. They, it's the first game, you know, always in the first game everybody gives 100%. It's not tiredness, it's not nothing. So. I think we have to start focus on Saturday and going step by step, try to, to win every game the, the two points to, to be as high as this is possible and of course uh, we will fight to, to be up in the competition. So that was of course Marcio, one member of the team. I'm sure you'll get to see the other ones later on. So a couple of teams have arrived and um, why don't we take a look at social media here. So for instance, the Swedish team arrived at Split Airport and um, when you look at that picture, well, it just seems like some people don't even know what they are doing there. They might just want to get out of the airport, but so Sweden, they have arrived. Two teammates here, they play together for Zagreb in the Champions League and um, it's tonight that they will be going head to head. So we have Croatian Sletko Horvat, and he will play his teammate from Serbia, Markovic. Also interesting that these two will be in fact going head to head, left wing versus right wing. And now two brothers. They will be playing for the first time in a major tournament. These are Spanish brothers Daniel and Alex Dushebayev, the sons of the legendary talent Dushebayev. Another team that has arrived are world champions France. Here I think they are on a leisurely stroll on the beach that should be in split. Now on to today's guests of the show. The German champions have arrived as well and um, he's one of the players who contributed tremendously to them winning the Euro 2016. He scored 46 goals and that made him the second goal, top goal scorer of the competition. So please welcome Tobias Reichmann. Welcome to our EHF live show. 
sofa. Very glad you're here. Now, you just had a very short three-day break where you were on vacation before coming down here to Zagreb with your team. And unlike 2016, where you had a lot of people missing, the squad is pretty much complete. Nobody is injured. What's the mood like in the camp? Very, very good mood. Uh, yesterday we came here and had our first training session and yeah, now we are, we cannot wait for the first match tomorrow and um, everybody is fine and we have yeah, such a good mood. Yeah. During your last, after your last preparation game against Iceland this past weekend, the final selection of the team was made and three mm. 2016 European champions were not called mm. on the team. Now, what was the atmosphere like? What was the the t mood in the in the locker room as Coach Christian yeah. Prokop announced that? Yeah, when he told us this uh, after the match, um, yeah, it was a surprise uh, with some players. But uh, yeah, we are all professional enough to uh, yeah um, to accept his uh, um, decision and yeah. But um, we also have now 16 great players and um, I think we are a little bit stronger and better than 2016 and we, can, yeah, and, um, we cannot wait for tomorrow. How certain were you of your selection? Um, of course, you are very happy when you uh, hear that you are with the team to go to the championship and um, yeah, I think we are both in a good mood and in a good uh, performance uh, now, Grotsky and, and me, and um, yeah, but we will see uh, how it's, how it's uh, in the first match. One of your Melsung teammates, Finn Lemke, was not selected and that was probably the biggest surprise. Mm. Were you in touch with him after? Did you console him a little bit? Yeah, we, we uh, um, texted uh, a, a little bit and of course, it was a surprise that he is, uh, was not uh, nominated mm -hmm. for the championship. Um, but yeah, Prokop has his system, and he's uh, he said that maybe the other players are uh, better for his system, and uh, we have to accept this. And um, I cannot say what we texting about uh, the decision, but um, yeah, it's it's fine. Can you talk a little bit about these tactical reasons that Prokop mentioned your system? Um, I think he wants to play a little bit more uh, offensive, offensive, mm -hmm. offensive, and um, and uh, Roshek is may maybe a little bit faster on his legs, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a bit smaller, and Lemke is taller and not so uh, fast than uh, Roshek, and maybe that was the decision here. Yeah. Now you're one of eight 2016 champions that are on the team mm -hmm. and you said you think the team now is better than two years ago. Can you compare them with a little more detail, the two teams? Yeah, in 2016 we had uh, three, four uh, injuries with Gensheimer, Grötzky and uh, Winczek. Um, and But now they are with the team and I think yeah, they are one of the best players in the world and in, of course, uh, as well in, in Germany, and so I think that we are, have more uh, more good players in our team now. Yeah. You're going into the tournament with very different expectations as the defending champion. Can you talk a little bit about, about the pressure and who might be putting pressure on you? I think we have no pressure. Of course, uh, everybody say, or almost everybody say in, in Germany, okay, we have to defend the the title, but of course, that's our goal that we want to defend this because uh, every sportsman go to a championship, they want to win everything, every match, and of course, then the title. And but I think at first we have to play a good uh, first round, and then uh, we will see. In German, uh, in, uh, in European uh, championship, you have uh, sixteen very good teams. They are on the equal level and um, so it depends how is your um, performance at these days when you have the matches and only small things decide if you win or lose these matches. One more question regarding the change of the team. The biggest difference to 2016 is probably that you have a different coach. 
Can you uh, talk about how Christian Prokop is different from Dago Sigurdsson? Um, he talks more than uh, Dago, <laughs> but uh, they are all uh, they are both um, two workers. They are um, working for small details, what we can do uh, better in defense or in the attack, and um, we we. Uh, prepared this in our training and I hope that it's uh, good for the matches. How have you evolved as a player within the last two years? Of course, it was uh, very good in Poland for me um, that uh, I played almost every match uh, 60 minutes and, um, and yeah, it was I made few steps forward, uh, personality and in my sports performance, and I think yeah, the last years was one of my most uh, successful uh, uh, in my career. When we see videos of you shooting, you're staying in the air for what seems like an eternity. Hmm. How do you work on an ability like that? <laughs> I almost do nothing. <laughs> um, when I get this question, I always say that I eat corn, <laughs> like popcorn, but um, yeah, I don't know. I have uh, good uh, gains from my parents and of course, when we have, um, uh, we are, what is in Kraftraum? Weight room. Weight room, yeah. When we are in the weight room, I do almost the same like the other players. So I, I have no um, special, um, uh, Vertical training, maybe? No, the übungen? Yeah. Exercises? Yeah, I have no uh, exercises for, yeah. for uh, my jumping and um, yeah, it's good gains from my, from my parents, I think. It's good to hear. <laughs> so let's look at the group, Group C. Also, um, in the German media, everybody's been saying that's three away games for you guys. Can you talk a little bit about how maybe the hostility from fans from the Balkan region might fuel you guys to the bad boys to even um, pull out a little one or two more percent of your performance? Yeah, of course, there are three countries from the Balkan region and um, I think most uh, fans in the arena will be uh, from there and um, and everybody knows the the Balkan guys uh, or the people they are emotional and they want to see to fight uh, the the players and it will be very hard these three matches and um, yeah I hope we have a good start with Montenegro tomorrow and then we will see what happens next. So Montenegro tomorrow you could or you would have potentially faced one of your teammates, goalkeeper, mm -hmm. but what happened to Nebroja Simic? Uh, I don't know. I, I was surprised yesterday. Uh, Oliver Rogisch, our team manager, told me that he's not uh, with the team anymore, but uh, I don't know why. Apparently he hurt himself during a basketball warm-up. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, sport. If you have training or uh, matches, there are only small things sometimes uh, that you have an injury and of course it's uh, disappointed for him and I wanted, wanted to play against him, but yeah, that's, that's sport. And another one who's not looking to be on the team is Vuko Borojan. Mm -hmm. A player like that being out, how does that change dynamics for you to face them? Uh, how, um, He's a great player, he's big and uh, tall and uh, yeah, he has a last year with the Scorpio he played very good in Champions League and um, I think maybe that's a small plus for us when he don't play and yeah but they are but um, they have a, also a good team if, if he play or not it's uh, it doesn't matter because they have also 16 good players in, in the team and it will be a hard fight. And then two days later it will be Slovenia, also a team to certainly not underestimate. Of course, uh, they have uh, good uh, playmakers, 
I don't know, um, maybe three, four, five good playmakers, and that's uh, the key for our defense that we defend these uh, playmakers. That we have good decisions uh, to solve their system, and um, then we will see. But we have to look uh, for the match tomorrow for the first game, not for the second, and that we have a good start. So, what are the team's expectations? Uh, for us, we want to uh, play fast handball and, uh, of course, good defense. And yeah, we want to play the first three matches very good that we have uh, at the best with six points for the uh, second round. And but we will see how we start tomorrow. Nobody's talking about winning the gold. No, because. Uh, Everybody knows that the tournament is very long and we didn't start yet and uh, tomorrow is the first important match and uh, the first matches are the most important. That we have a good feeling maybe then for the, for the main round and yeah. Okay, one final question for you. On the EHF live show we are starting a prediction game where we are asking all our guests to predict one game. We've also asked the fans. Mm -hmm. So for you, the first game will be Croatia against Serbia. Who is going to win that one? Um, I think Croatia, but it will be a hard fight for Croatia. I think Serbia and Croatia, when they played uh, against each other, um, that's yeah, a lot of emotions and I think it will be a hard fight for both. Okay, you've heard it. Croatia it is. Tobias, I want to thank you very much for coming here with the little mascot. His name is Toa. Now, that okay. should be meaningful to you as we're hoping you will score many of these. That's the German word for goal. So thank, thank you, you very, very much. much for coming here. And um, you, so guys, you've heard it. He has selected Croatia to win against Serbia. Remember, it's still time for you to take part in our Facebook competition. So just choose the right emoji, pick the flag, and we will reveal the fans winner later on. And before we do that, I would like to introduce you to our third competitor for our Facebook prediction game. This is our Snap King, Brian. Field reporter here, Brian Campion aka King of the Streets checking in for my very first prediction of the HGF Euro 2018. It's a big derby, but I'm going to have to go with the hosts in this first one. I think they're going to have too much for them in the second half. I think it'll be a very close first half, but Croatia to win by plus four. All the votes are in then. Brian is picking Croatia, Tobias Reichmann picked Croatia, and the fans with an overwhelming majority of 75% also picked Croatia to win this one against Serbia. Now, you can watch this match, of course, live on ehftv.com and we will be revealing the winner of our prediction competition that starts off today. Then it'll be guests versus fans versus Brian all throughout the competition and we'll see who comes out on top at the very end. Now, that's almost the end of the show, but don't forget you can follow us on all channels. On Snapchat, it's EHF underscore live. On Twitter, it's at EHF underscore live and at EHF Euro. Instagram, also at EHF Euro and Facebook at EHF Euro. YouTube slash EHF Euro. And of course, right here, our EHF 2018 live show presented by Lidl on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be back here same time tomorrow, 12 o'clock. Be there and now enjoy the action.